gentlemen. Good. How you feeling? Good to see you guys. What's going on? Welcome. Good to have you. All right. We have K-State up here on the dais. We have head coach Jerome Tang. We have senior forward Keontae Johnson. We have junior forward Ish Masood. We will uh, start with an opening statement from coach. Uh, then we'll go to questions for the student athletes. We will dismiss them because we have breakouts. I was able to negotiate a later breakout room, so we will go 4.15 to 4.30 in the breakout area for all of you that want to talk to Marquise. I believe he'll be over there. Uh, then we'll go to questions for Coach Tang. All right, so Coach, if you want to get us started with an opening statement, that would be great. Um, well, first of all, we apologize for being late. Was trying to get some rehab in, uh, make sure that we're as physically fit as we can be for tomorrow. Um, we're blessed to be in New York, you know, for another day or two and be together and excited about uh, the game on Saturday. Once again, we'll start with questions for the student athletes. We do have a couple microphones, so just raise your hand and we'll get you a microphone. We'll start in the back over here in front of me, way out in the back. Hey, uh, Tom D'Angelo, Palm Beach Post. Keontae, when uh, we asked Dusty about his relationship with you, he actually got emotional talking about what you have gone through. Uh, what, what was your relationship with him? What, uh, what impact did he have in you? I, I know uh, he had left, I think, before you started playing, but just talk about that and, and you know, your relationship with Dusty. Um, me and Coach May, I mean, he was a part of the recruitment process uh, for Florida. Um, his son was the walk-on for our team, so one of his, his son is like one of my close friends. Uh, he was at the game last night. So, I mean, Coach May always been there. Um, he gave me advice um, throughout the season when their season was over, he came to our practice and um, a few of our games. So, I mean, me and Coach May is real close. Um, that's my guy. Proud of everything he's doing for FAU this year. We'll stay in the back row on the aisle on the right side. Right there, Adam. Uh, Adam Kilgore, the Washington Post. Uh, this is for uh, Ishmael. Um, you know, the, the story's been told many, many times about last year there was two guys on scholarship and now you're in the Elite Eight here. Um, what are the skills and qualities that your, your coach has that allowed the program to, to do what it's done? Like, what, what, what role has uh, Jerome played in, in, in that path? Uh, I mean, it, it's just the faith, you know. It, it can't be understated enough, you know, the amount of faith uh, he had in, in me and Marquise and the belief he had that him and the coaching staff would be able to put a team uh, around us and be able to uh, build that foundation to be able to do what we're doing today. And, and, and then also that and just the hard work. Um, just instilling that hard work, and he wanted to bring guys that valued hard work because he, he's a really hard working man himself. And just having that around is just, uh, I would say those two things, faith and hard work. We'll stay on that right side uh, right here at the end. Yep, go ahead. Uh, Zach Brazil, your post. Keontae, when you were deciding to transfer to Kansas State, did you, did you have any conversations with Marquise? Um, and did he kind of try to help them get you? Um, yeah, me, when Coach Tang started recruiting me, Marquise was like one of the main guys that reached out. Um, his brother also um, was DMing me the whole time, just giving his pros and cons, saying if I go to a different conference, I'll be Keontae. But if I come to the Big 12, like I'll, I'll showcase and show everybody who like the real Keontae is. So I feel like Keith and his brother did a great job of just um, making me feel welcome, feel like a family. Um, they never like forced the conversation. They always told me to go with my heart. Yeah. I feel like that was just real for me. To have you know one of the star players out recruiting, how how unique is that, and kind of how did that make you feel? Uh, I mean, it's major. I mean, I, I know Marquise. I knew who he was. I seen his game before. Um, I mean, I wanted to play with a guard like him. I watched film on him. Um, just seeing his IQ and just trying to relate it to my game of when I cut it and stuff, and just see where I can get open at. And he's doing a great job at that right now. So. Just props down. We'll stay on that same side, one row back. Ish, the start of the season was somewhat rocky for you. A few games you didn't play and a few games you didn't play much in. I'm wondering if you could just walk us through that process of how you and Coach Tang got on the same page and maybe if there was a mindset change for you to be making an impact on the team now. Uh, I mean, uh, for myself, I just uh, understood, you know, it's a different situation, a different role. And, you know, people are able to grow and uh, understand and, and understand things at different times. So. For me, it just took a little longer to understand what coaching staff wanted for me. And, you know, at, at times it was frustrating. But, you know, just having the conversation, Coach Tang always tells us his door is always open. And at first, I didn't really want to, like, 
you didn't want to really have those conversations because it was hard conversations to have. But I realized, you know, this team is winning, and I just wanted to be a part of it. And I knew I could help, and I knew I could uh, play a big part for this team. So it's just uh, taking that first step to having those conversations and just um, just understanding that any day you could control what you can and just try to do your best, and that's all you can ask for. And so Coach Tang was really uh, open and honest, and he really helped me a lot. And I felt like the conversations we had helped get us to uh, where we are now. We'll stay on this side in the first row with Andy. So, Keontae, Marquise turns and says, watch this to Isaiah Mateen. What did you see when he turns his head and says that to put yourself in position for that alley -oop? Um, Well, I didn't know him and Coach Sam was like arguing over a call, but I just said, I kept saying AJ kept scooting up um, farther and farther, and then as soon as Keith stopped looking at Coach Tane, he just looked at me, and I just told him to throw it, and I just like did a full sprint and just went up and tried to Dunk it, I mean, the reverse, just it was the momentum of the game. I didn't, wasn't planning on doing it, but it just happened. Did you say throw it or is it? I mean, it's an eye contact that we do. I mean, we just, I, I told him that I raise my eyebrow sometimes or I just like, <laughs> like or something like that. So he just throw it. I mean, just got to, I knew it was going to get there, just had to finish it. So. All right, we're going to go one row back on the aisle. Rob Collins, Fox 4 in Kansas City ish, being a, a New York guy, when you see this on the back page of the post, man, what goes through your mind? It's his city. He missed the New York City for a reason. It's, I wouldn't expect anything less. So he, he's more, well deserving of that, all that praise because he's worked hard for it and, and no one deserves it more than him. We're going to come across the room right here in the front row on the end. Ralph Russo from the Associated Press. Yeah, a lot of transfers on this team. And Keontae, you gave your reason. Ish, why did you come here? Why did you come to Kansas State? I know you were in the previous administration, so to speak. What, uh, what, what, what was it about Kansas State that drew you here? Uh, just, you know, it has a great history. Uh, Kansas State plays in the great, uh, best league in the country. And just the history of the school, it's a great university, first and foremost. And then Manhattan, Kansas is, uh, you know, Manhattan is that one of the happiest places on earth. And just being around that environment, seeing the octagon, the doom, and just, you know, just the opportunity to present it presented for, uh, for me and, you know, to come out and just uh, have a new home. And it, just, it was something I couldn't pass on. We'll stay on this side on the aisle in row three. Yep, Rustin Dodd from The Athletic. This is for Keontae. Um, when you knew you were going to get a chance to, to play again and you kind of mapped it in your mind, you know, what did you see for yourself in this you know, last season of college basketball? Um, I mean, I had a goal for myself coming into basketball this season. Um, I wanted to take advantage of it. And my goal was to try to change the program. Um, just play the – I mean, Coach Tane, he, he showed me his – Platform for me, uh, he's at the Freedom. I, sh I seen that in him, and I knew Big 12. I was preseason player of the year in the SEC, so I just wanted to transfer my talents to the Big 12, um, what they call the Pro League, and just see how, basically see my skill sets from there. And I mean, Coach Saint had trusted me from day one um, with everything. My team just welcomed me here, and I mean, it's just like a home basically to me, so it's the best thing I could have did. We're gonna stay on the aisle. We're gonna go to the other side, uh, row four. For, for both Jimmy Everson and Manhattan Mercury, for, for both you guys, and in kind of the, the early going of, of preparing for FAU, what, what are some things that have kind of stood out that the coaches have talked to you about? Let's start with Keontae, and then we'll go to Ish. Um, they do a good job. Uh, I mean, it's going to be like a lot of one-on-one -on -one games, really just stand in front of our men. Um, they hit tough threes, tough. They physical. Uh, they don't back down. They play hard. And it's going to be it's gonna be another tough game. I mean, it's final. We'll be in the Elite Eight. Just basically just got to keep it going, really. So just stick together. Um, the toughest team is going to win. The uh, most connected team is going to win this game. And I feel like that's what we do is best, and we should come out with it up. Uh, I mean, you know, uh, they're obviously here for a reason. Uh, they, they won, what, 34 games. That doesn't happen by accident. Um, they're obviously well coached, have a great team, great team chemistry. They shoot the ball really well. So like Coach Tang always says, you know, it's going to be a 40-minute war. And this is a matter of, you know, falling back on our habits and worry about what we control and what we could do and just being the aggressors. All right, we'll come back in front of me in row three with Adam. Hey, guys, Adam Zagoria, New York Times. Um, you know, Coach said yesterday the Big 12 was the best conference. Baylor and Kansas won the last two titles. Texas Tech got to the final of the year before that. What is it about the league that makes it so good, so tough? And not to get ahead of yourselves, but, you know, how much are you guys trying to kind of continue that? the trend of the Big 12 success this year? Start with Ish, and then we'll go to Keontae. Uh, I would just say, you know, just from top to bottom, there's no nights off, whether you're going, uh, you know, 
playing at Baylor or, or at Kansas or going to Oklahoma, it's no nights off. Anyone could be anybody. And just the, the detail and having a game plan for every single team, and they're doing the same for you. It's just, and the talent on every roster, I mean, everybody, every team has multiple players, one through five, one through 10. So just all of that plays a big role into, you know, in the tough environments as well, it just plays a role into um, it being the best league. Um, basically what it said, I mean, you got a lot of great coaches in the league, um, a lot of talented players um, mm -hmm. every night. I mean, we had six out of 10 teams. I was in the top 25, so there's no off nights there. Um, best player and the most connected team got to show up, and I feel like that's what we did throughout the season. Stay on that same side, a couple rows behind. Go ahead. Hey, guys, Scott Reese, KCTV5. Uh, I know Coach has done a great job keeping you guys in the moment, one game brackets. Uh, but that said, you're human. Uh, you know the situation. One game away from potentially the ultimate college basketball stage. How do you stay in the moment? And have you allowed yourself to dream a little bit about the Final Four? Let's go Keontae and then uh, Keontae and then Ish. Um, we always preach go one or no. So this game, I mean, we're going to take this, um, try to do everything we can to lock in with film um, mentally. I mean, even though a lot of guys <coughs> might be tired, but – just try to just stay focused, um, just stay together, and just just got to lock in on scout mainly. I mean, at this point, we want, like you said, one game away, and everybody go is trying to get to the national championship. That was our goal from the get in the beginning of the season. So, I mean, we just gonna keep with that fight, with that hunger, and just stay together. Uh, you know, like Keontae said, you know, the whole year we've been preaching going one and zero. So Coach Tang said earlier this morning we're gonna fall back to our habits. So since we've been doing that the whole year. Um, I think it's. I think the guys are gonna be pretty locked in on going one and no, not looking ahead to Houston, but just worried about FAU. Okay, we'll stay. We're staying on this side on the aisle in row two. Keontae, Tom Canavan with the Associated Press, and I know you've probably been asked this many times before, but if I had a health issue and was in a medically induced coma for three days, the last thing I think I would do is get back out on the court. I mean, did you see 10 doctors just to make sure, or why? Um, I mean, my parents always told me never let uh, one person tell you a decision and change your life. So we went to, um, I got two other opinions, and the two other opinions out of the, well, I got three different opinions, and it was the scale, the ratio was two to one. So I just went with the, the two doctors said and trusted God and trusted my faith just with everything, just, my circle kept me positive, and it just kept me in an uplifting mood, which got me through a lot. So, We're going to come back to the front on the other side on the aisle in row three, I believe. Nope, back one. There you go. D. Scott Fritch and K-State Athletics, Keontae. I mean, every time I see you, you have a smile on your face right now. Just how much fun are you having right now, and uh, what are you remembering most about this experience to this point? Um, I mean... I, know, I just always try to keep a, a positive energy around me. Just always let the guys see I'm happy. Um, I mean, I can't be blessed enough to be here. So just trying to enjoy life, um, enjoy the moment. I mean, college, you're only in college for so long. So everybody that come back to the K-State or previous at Florida always told me um, enjoy college-wise here because it could be gone from you. Um, basketball was almost taken away from me. So I just try to go out there and have fun, um, show my teammate the love and joy I have out there for them. Stay on that same side, uh, one row back on the end. Uh, Zach Brazil, New York Post. Can I ask Coach Tang a question? We'll get to him after the student athletes. Okay, Keontae, what, when you first started getting back on the court, how, how did you not think about the health? Like, how did you, how did, was that not something on your mind? Um, I mean, in the summer, Coach Tang just always told me to trust God. Um, he went and put me in this position to not uh, fail me and not take care of me. So, I mean, when he said that, just going through the practice in the summer, at first I was thinking about it, but going through practice, just um, getting comfortable um, with the guys around me, trusting the medical team, um, Luke, um, it just, it was easier for me to, that's like one less stress on me. So I just wasn't, I mean, I don't really think about it. I just go out there and play. Um, I mean, everything happened for a reason, but I just got my faith in God. I know he gonna lead the way and not fail me, so. We'll stay on that same side, one row back in the middle. Go ahead. Uh, for either of the players, but mostly for Ish, Alec Busty Rivals. Um, you and Marquise have obviously been roommates. You guys are best friends. Last night he goes down, hurts his ankle um, or foot when he fell. Have you seen his 
um, determination and hard work kind of carry over towards rehabbing and making sure that he's able to play tomorrow night in comparison to what he does on the court in the summer in terms of getting extra shots up? Well, we start with Ish and then we'll go to Keontae. I mean, yeah, for sure. I mean, I know Ke- I knew that wasn't going to keep Keith out of the game, and I knew once the game was over, you know, he was going to be doing it, uh, working on his foot around uh, around the clock. So, you know, it, it's Keith is fine. He's a warrior. Uh, he's battle tested. Um, a little ankle, little ankle tweak, not going not going to affect him. Yeah, I mean, Keith. I mean, he's the hardest worker. He always want to show um, that he's a leader on the team, and for him to come back in the game was big for us. It just gave everybody more um, comfortable. You know, just feel showing that he wanted to come out there and work hard for us. So we just try to go out there and have his back and showing that we got him, even though he was injured at the time. We'll take one more question for the student athletes up here in the front on the aisle with Vahe. Yeah, Keontae, just one other thing about the, the collapse. Um, how, what, where have you put that in your mind and your perspective about the, the meaning of that in your life? Is there a way you can describe that, what, what that meant to who you became? Um, I mean, for me, it just uh, it helped me see that I'm an inspirational to everybody around the world. Um, a lot of people hit me up just saying I'm inspiring them. And, I mean, that motivated me just to keep going, just don't let my story fail. So, I mean, they motivate me, and I'm motivating other people, and I feel like, I mean, that's just driving me to keep going. Okay. We'll dismiss those two. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. Appreciate it, you guys. So, breakout room is in the Delta Club. So, if you walk out in the hallway and you turn left, we will have a few people, I believe, escorting media to the breakout room area. Marquise will be there. I've been, it has been confirmed. So, just out and to the left for the breakout rooms. Those will be open 4.15 to 4.30. All right. Those of you who remain, we'll take questions for Coach Tang. We'll start up here with Andy, and then we'll start working our way back. Uh, Jerome, as an assistant at Baylor, you've been on both sides of the Elite Eight. The joy of winning it to get to the Final Four and feeling that pain of losing. How how do you describe what an Elite Eight game is like? You know, I've always heard that it's probably the hardest game to win. You know, I mean, both teams know that they're right there. And um, so, yeah, I've I've experienced both. uh, You know, we're going to... Like the guy said, we, we have the same old boring habits and we're going to work on going 1-0. And, um, you know, I'm just uh, grateful to be here because you think how many coaches never get a chance to play in an Elite Eight and you just said I have been in three of them already. And so uh, I'm so blessed. But just a quick follow what was that swing like of the, the win versus the didn't go? Look, come on, man. When you lose, the season's over, right? Like there's like no – there's no way to describe it. It's such an abrupt end, right? And uh, you got guys that you're never going to be with again. And, um, yeah, it's not a, not a great feeling. And then when you win, I mean, it's exhilaration, and it's something that you work so hard for. It took us, I think, like 18 years to, to do it. And, to you know, um, you know that, that, that was just one of the best feelings um, that I got from a basketball experience in my life. We'll stay here in the front row on the aisle with Vine. <clears throat> Jerome, I believe it was a year ago today that you were announced as, as the new coach. I'm not certain of that, but I believe it was. And I, I'm curious, after so many years at Baylor, did you know the persona you would have when you finally became a head coach, or, or did you get on the job and, and start saying, this is who I'll be, how I'll be? How did, how did you feel that out? I, I'm just being me. This is who I am of – always been like this um i mean i'm not doing anything different than i hadn't done for the last 19 years I just did it behind the scenes and now you know for some reason social media i guess it might be dream dowling is uh <laughs> got me out there but yeah i've been the same guy all this time and i'm you know i was never going to change we'll stay on the aisle a couple rows behind same side rustin dog from the athletic guy drum can you take me back to when Keontae uh, committed to you guys? I, I know it was later in the process in the summertime. Do you remember just kind of where you were and what, how the staff kind of reacted uh, to that news? Yeah, well, I can take you back to when he didn't commit, like because we were getting ready to go on vacation as a staff together, and he had told us that he would tell us on like August 11th, 
And, um, but he didn't clear it with his mom first, so Miss Nika was a little upset, so she wouldn't let him do it on the 11th, so we're on vacation and we're waiting for him to call and let us know, and he doesn't let us know, so like you really can't celebrate. You know, you can't, like, is something gonna go wrong? Then he visits Nebraska after we get back, and then after he goes to Nebraska, he comes back and it's like, school's about to start the next day, and he says, all right, I'm coming. So it, um, we felt like we was gonna get him, but then once he does it, you don't really have time to celebrate. You got to get him in school and get him there. And so it wasn't, it wasn't the big party that we had wanted it to be. And but very thankful that it did happen. Uh, we'll come up here in row two on this side over here. Yep. Hey, Scott Fritch and KSA Athletics. Uh, Keontae has had some great dunks this year. How would you rate the one last night? And uh, secondly, just what has he meant to your team? from a playmaking standpoint this year? I don't rate the dunks. Well, top three, top three. Um, I'm not gonna tell you what order. Uh, and um, what has he meant to the team? Uh, man, just like it's real, I think it's very evident to see what he does on the floor but I'm just telling y'all what he does off the floor in the locker room and how he's just one of the guys and treats everybody the same and all his teammates love him. Um, it's just, you, you can't like quantify it, how it impacts the chemistry of the team. And, you know, guys just root for each other because they see this guy who's, he's clearly gifted, right? And, but he just acts like one of the guys and, I appreciate that. We'll go one row back on the end, and then we're going to go same row on the aisle. Uh, Zach was on your post. Joe, what was it like when you take the job? Like, how did it go with, you know, deciding you wanted to keep Marquise and, or trying to convince him to stay? Um, you know, he obviously not a lot of high majors believed in him. I was told Kent State was the only high major to offer him at, when he transferred out of Arkansas Little Rock. He just, like, how did that kind of whole process go? Well, I got the chance to watch him play for a whole year and, and, and help scout and, per, you know, develop a defensive plan for him. And, and watching film while I was at Baylor, I told our staff, I told him he's a Baylor guard, like he could play for us at Baylor. And, uh, and then I also thought pound for pound he was the toughest kid in the conference. So when I was interviewing for the job and I, he was one of the people that I was like, man, I got to make sure I, I – keep him and then after I got the job our first team meeting we had he had incredible eye contact when I spoke to the team and he was nodding very positively and I just felt like there was a connection there you know found out a few weeks later that he had actually texted our athletic director Gene Taylor my name as somebody he should look at and that he had told Gene he was planning to stay and help the program win and so you know, I mean, knowing that, uh, just, just that kind of buy-in and that kind of belief, uh, you know, it's, it's just, it was just incredible. So it really wasn't anything that I did. This is this kid and he, this young man, and he's just, just, just incredible. I was told that his older brother actually did a lot of research on you. Yeah, Marcus does a lot of research. And, uh, I mean, I didn't I, – I never even thought anybody paid attention to what I did, right? Like, I mean, Scott is a rock star, and – it's amazing that how people pay attention to everything you do, and that's a lesson for our guys to learn that everything they do, people, somebody's paying attention to it, and, and it could impact your future. Stay on the same row on the aisle. Yeah, it's right behind you. I'm sorry. Timmy for St. Manhattan Mercury. Um, like, like Fahey said, it has been exactly a year since that, that introductory press conference. And the it's a great day to be a Wildcat, and it's not going to take long. Have you as, have you processed that? Have you processed what all has happened in the span of 365 days? I, I don't know, like you can fully process all of that, but you know, I and like I always say that this wonderful book that I read it says that the power of life and death are in the tongue, and we have the ability to speak life to people or to speak death to people. And um, everyone talks about positive thinking and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's, it's right there in the scripture. And the, I, 
I can't tell you that I thought about what I was saying at that time, but I, I do believe that it was, um, it was the, the Spirit of God speaking through me, and therefore it inspired me to, to live to those words that were spoken. We'll go to the back on the aisle, and then we'll go over to you next. Uh, Adam Kilgore with The Washington Post, and I've got two, if that's okay? Yep. Okay. Um, uh, you, you, for you, you've been coaching now 30 years in only only three places, and most of, most of the time, obviously, at two places. It's a very itinerant profession. It's very rare. Is that something that you wanted to, you know, shape your career like? Did it just kind of happen? Like, is is it something that you uh, appreciate and like? Like, you know, why why to go that way for you? And are you are you happy with it? Well, I'm super thankful for the way things have gone. Um, I can't tell you in the midst of going through it that I, that I was because I couldn't see the big picture. Um, I, I could have stayed at Heritage Christian and been the youth pastor at the church for the rest of my life. It was the best job in America. And I, I always feel like wherever I'm at, it's like the best place in the world. And, and I got to the point where I was at Baylor that I told, the, I told God that if he wanted me, me to be an assistant for the rest of my life, I was okay with that because my identity was not going to be caught up in a title. And if he wanted me to quit coaching and go into ministry and do something different, I'm, I was willing to do that too. Um, I just wanted to do what he wanted me to do in my life. And I felt when I got to that point in my life that I wasn't pursuing a title, there, God allowed me to experience some great things. I, I always talk about the fruits of our labor. It's very rare you get to be somewhere and start something and then watch it come to completion or reach its pinnacle. And I got to see that at Baylor. We start from the bottom and we built that thing and, and win, win a national championship. And, uh, and so it's, it's just, it was great that I got to experience the fruits of our labor, both Scott and I together. And so I, I, I think I'm a pretty loyal guy. And when I'm all in, I'm all in. And, and so that, that's just kind of how I live my life. Yeah, and, and the, the phrase crazy faith that we see in the t-shirts, you use it all the time. Um, it's obvious that like uh, re religious faith is very important to you. Um, when it comes to your team, is, is, that, is that word faith referring to religious faith? Is it referring to faith in team? Like, like how do you define what faith means within your program and, and how you want your players and everybody around to sort of perceive well, I, it? I want every individual in our team to um, experience their own faith and what that means, whether it's faith in their teammates whether it's faith in the coaching staff, whether it's my faith in them. Um, obviously, for me personally, uh, I'm, it's my faith in my beliefs and uh, my faith in what family means and my faith in what, you know, how, how to love people. You know, that, that's what that means to me. And so I want everyone to be able to, to put their own definition and their own um, – add their own story to what that word faith means. I just know that, uh, I don't know if y'all ever saw the video when Scott got the job at Baylor. Um, it was like he looked like he was 14 and he says, I didn't come to Baylor to win a game, I came to win a national championship, right? And everybody thought he was crazy, right? This little kid saying that and um, he got a lot of backlash for it because of what had happened and then 18 years later, we win a national championship, and all they can do is play that video over and over, and they say, what great faith he had. And they called him crazy early, and then they called it faith late. And so that's what we call crazy faith, and that's what I tried to tell the guys. I'm going to say, we're going to go to the NCAA tournament. And at the Big 12 media day, people thought I was crazy. And now that we are here, they're like, man, what great faith. And so we've just lived by this crazy faith of believing in each other that we can accomplish anything together if we love each other and we play with joy. We'll stay on that same side. Just raise your hand real quick so we can see it. Go ahead. Coach, two-parter for you on Marquise. I'll ask both at once. First of all, I wonder if you could just break it down. What makes him such a great passer? Is it his precision or is it his vision on the court? Or what makes him so great? And then the second part, your face lit up. You had the biggest smile I've seen when he thanked God on the court in that post-game interview right after the game last night. How, how proud were you of him in that moment, and, and what did that mean to you? Um, what allows him to be such a great passer? I, I, it's, it's his confidence. He has great vision, but he also has this confidence, kind of like Patrick Mahomes and, and Aaron Rodgers. They think they can like thread that ball through anywhere, and he really feels like he can get it there. So he has this great precision, this great confidence and vision that he was blessed with. Um, the, the smile on my face, we talk about winning interviews all the time, and you know, um, to talk about your why, whether it's your family, your faith, 
you know, whatever it is, talk about your why, then, um, you know, then it's about your, your teammates, you know, and then finally then talk about, you know, yourself or how you, you was able to contribute to what happened in that game. And he, he went in order, you know, he talked about his why and then he talked about his teammates. And, and it's just really cool to see guys like grow and develop in that aspect. We'll move up a couple rows, and then we're going to come across the room. Hey, Coach. Julia Levina, KSN in Wichita. A couple weeks ago, a K-State freshman passed away, Lily Kane, and I was told that you spoke with the family um, before the game yesterday. I'm just wondering, can you describe that conversation and what made you in that moment want to talk to the family? Uh, my older brother passed away about 14 years ago and my mom told me that the worst pain someone could ever experience is burying their child and like it just stuck I just remember anytime I talk to my mom and my brother comes up I can it's like she's about to cry like she can still feel the pain and Lily I went to her sorority, I had dinner there, we did something else, there was a boot scoot boogie that I was at with them and, and she drove down to Oklahoma State for our game there and she was, she was just a, a big fan and, and they, they told me that she was more a big fan of me than necessarily the basketball team and, and when I heard that what had happened, I've been wanting to get the number so I could reach out to her parents because of that pain that and so yesterday, sitting, you know, 40 minutes before the game, instead of just me thinking about what could go wrong and everything like that, I said, you know, man, I could use this time to bless somebody's life. And so I was able to reach out to her parents and, and just talk to them and just let them know I was thinking about them and praying for them. And, yeah, it was, that's tough. I'm sorry, y'all. Come back on the other side. We'll start on the aisle and then here in row one. Hi, Jerome. Tom Canavan with the AP. I just have uh, two questions. One's very quick. With Marquise, is there an update on his injury? Is it simply a tweaked ankle or what? Yeah, I, I think uh, Luke says it's a tweaked ankle. He's doing all right. Feels a lot better today. Okay. And the second question is, the NBA is thinking about going back to drafting 18-year-olds. How will this change the landscape in college basketball? Um. You know, uh, I think if a kid and his family um, uh, feel like they're ready to go straight from high school to the NBA and become professionals, that they should be allowed to. They're allowed to in a lot of other sports. And so, you know, I'm, I'm not against that. Uh, as coaches, we're just going to have to determine who's going to be going that route and make sure we don't waste time uh, recruiting them. Um, but, you know, uh, with NIL and some of the different things that kids are allowed to take, young people are allowed to take advantage of now um, with their name, image, and likeness, uh, they're going to have some good decisions to make, and it all benefits the student athlete, and so I'm all about it. Come up here in row one. Hey, Jerome. Kelly Chabonet here from the Kansas City Star. Uh, one thing I've been thinking about lately is that uh, it's kind of neat that you guys, you have such a diverse roster with guys from different religions, different countries, different states. It's probably as much, you know, as diverse a roster as you can see in this tournament. Looking back, just how did you think you unified all those guys into to one purpose this season? Um, well, I'll talk about their DNA. They're all winners. And one of the things we talked about them coming was that we were about winning. Right, it wasn't about their individual accomplishments and stuff, but that winning helps everybody gets what they want. And good businesses, when both people win, the team wins, then individuals get awards. That that's what happens. And so, th because they were all winners, they were willing to buy into that. And then they're just really good people, you know. And uh, we made sure that everybody learned each other's story. And when you know somebody's story and you know the things that they've gone through in life, you can empathize with them and. It allows your hearts to connect quicker. And so, but they're just a great group of young men, man. And so they love each other. Um, they appreciate each other. And um, because they want to win, they want to do whatever it takes. 
Stay on this side, a couple rows back on the end. Go ahead. Coach Sam Fetterman from Mid-Major Madness. Coach May said that you guys were a team that he's watched at different points throughout the year. Is FAU a team that you've watched at any point throughout the year? And what have you gotten initially from the scouting what do you, uh, about that team? All right, well, I'm not going to talk to you about the scouting. But I will tell you that I've watched several of their games. They play in the league um, against North Texas. And one of my best friends, Grant McCaslin, is a coach there. Uh, play against La Tech and Talvin Hester is a coach there. And I've known Dusty for a really long time when um, he was at Indiana. Uh, they recruited a kid that played for me at Heritage Christian. So I'm a big fan of uh, Coach May and I knew when at Florida, him and Mike, just great guys. And so he has a terrific team. And I'm telling you, you could, if you just took the names off the front of the jerseys and you line them up against anybody in America, right, you'd say they're a high major team. And they are, they're high major team, but they're high major competitors too. Uh, just tough and together, as connected of a team as there is in the country. And so I, I've been super impressed with them with what I've seen. We've got time for two more. We're going to start in the back on this side, and then we'll come down to the aisle. Uh, Zach Weinberger, Palm Beach Post. Is, uh, is there something about maybe the guard play of Florida Atlantic that has stood out to you? Obviously, Janelle Davis and Elijah Martin are the guys that are leading that team in scoring and uh, obviously have shown a lot. So what have you seen from those two guys? Man, uh, Nelly Davis is a goon. Right, he wow, what a player! Like, he's got he's got NBA feet. He he's got NBA balance. I mean, he he's a special athlete and with a great feel for the game. I read the story about him uh, getting Ochai Baji, Baji's workout and and diving into it. I mean, you can tell he's he's passionate about the game, and you can tell his why. Like last night, that interview when he told his family, "Hey, we're gonna be all right." You can tell, like, my man has a why. And so that, that, that's really impressive. All the guards are terrific. They can all shoot. They can all dribble and pass. They're quick. They're athletic. They defend. I mean, they're, they're just they're super impressive to watch. All right, on the aisle here, last question. Tim Everson, Manhattan Mercury. I also wanted to ask about uh, Vladislav, the, the seven-foot-one center. How does he compare with, with some of the other big men that you guys have faced in the last couple of days? A couple, yeah. But, I mean, he's a, he's a Big 12 center, right? I mean, he was at Texas Tech, and he's every bit of 7'1", and he's strong, and he's physical, and he can catch, and he can finish, and he protects the rim, does a great job in ball screen coverage, um, and he's as good as anybody we faced this year. All right. Coach, we appreciate you taking the time. All right. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Just a reminder, Hammond Communications is posting recordings of both press conferences today in the NCAA's digital media hub. That is www.ncaa.veritone.com. Once again, www.ncaa.veritone.com. Veritone, V-E-R-I-T-O-N-E. -E. Transcripts are being provided by ASAP. Those will be posted shortly. Thank you for joining us today. We will see you tomorrow.